It is 708 here on KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. And, as promised, Mayor Dan Pope, sitting in the third chair this morning, all ready to uh, impart some information on us about what's going on in the city of Lubbock. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. It's great to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. First time on your show. Well, good. It's uh, Our show's not that old. Yeah, it's fairly new. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll look forward to coming back again. May, if you invite me, maybe after, thir- after 30, 45 minutes, you may not want me back. But. Oh, no, man. We always love the mayor. Um, so how are things? Things are good. It's been a year. This is a... This week marks the uh, the election it was a year ago last Saturday, so it's it's uh, uh, just seems like it's been longer for most people. A year ago, so you've been me, in there a year. Then. For me, it feels like it's been. We we're about talking about that this morning. Ninety I, I could, days, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 good. Things are good. So you got one year under your belt, and yeah. is, this, is this something you would do again if you uh, had it to do over? Sure, I would. <laughs> now, they're they're um, I had my eyes pretty wide open about it. I mean, yeah. there've been surprises. Were you surprised? There are a few surprises, uh, but but for the most part, I mean, having uh, nine years on the school board gave me a relatively. Uh, it's very different, but there's a lot. There are a lot of similarities. Mm. Well, it's politics. It is, and it's the. I think the the budget process and and learning that you learn learning how you how you move a large bureaucratic or you know how you, you communicate differently in that kind of organization you know, into small business, which is where my background is. Yeah, uh, but it's a uh, it's been a good year. Yeah. Well, uh, we do want to remind the audience again, if you'd like to call and, and to be on the air with the mayor and ask him a question, you are welcome to do so. You can call at 806-770-5790. If you want to text a, a, a question for the, to the mayor, you may do so at 806-680-2790. Well, so uh, I suppose that the budget is the big news going on at the city. It is. We're, we're um, It's sort of... Um, you know, I guess behind the scenes right now, the staff's been working on budget since uh, since January, maybe maybe even December, but uh, we're starting to um, it's starting to get closer to the time that we see it. You know, we, we our, our our practice, I think, our, even our charter may may d- d- dictate that the city manager pr- presents the budget to the council at the first meeting in July. Uh, but we'll uh, next week, next Thursday, we're having a special work session to talk about health insurance and health, you know, health care. We've got some work. Uh, Karen Gibson's leading a committee of uh, three council members working with staff to to make some recommendations around health insurance. So, um, so we'll see a little so, bit, a little bit of that. We talk about point. city employees' health insurance. Right. So is this? Uh, are you guys part of Obamacare, or does this go through private insurance? Um, well. Everybody's a part of it. If you have insurance in the United States, you're part of Obamacare in some form or fashion. Uh, we're self-insured, um, so we uh, we you know we accept the the risk uh, up to a certain point. We reinsure the stuff. Uh, we have you know reinsure the stuff on top of that. Um, but we have a we have a pretty interesting uh, situation. We not only have employees, but and retirees. And we think retirees. We often think over sixty five. So. Medicare eligible, but we have a lot of retirees that are uh, less than sixty-five. Particularly uh, our, pub, our, our, you know, our first responders, our police and fire, who who retire, um, often retire in their in their fifties. So it's a, it's different managing two or excuse me three pools of of, of um, covered lives, and which is unusual. Most private business that's not something you deal with, or certainly in in the school business, you had TRS that. Once they retire, they, they went in, in a TRS. We are part of the uh, uh, municipal employee retirement system. That's not the exact nomenclature, but we, we are part of that. But um, we're, we're our health insurance costs are, ra- are rising um, roughly ten percent a year. Wow! And I can get out of hand in a hurry. Huh? Yeah, it's it's a it's our fastest growing cost. We've got to find a way. It's really unsustainable. We've got to find a way to bend, bend that curve a little bit. So, so as far as uh, you've got other cities such as Houston, Dallas, yeah. they're having a lot of problems with their pensions, with right. their retirees. Right. Um, is that something that might have to change with Lubbock as far as um, you were talking about those costs that come yeah. along with people retiring early right. and, right. and stuff like that? Yeah, it's a good question. We, we uh, I think, good, good want to clarify we do not have a pension for our the, the ones our city employees are part of the, the state retirement process our police are part of that same same uh 
group, we do have a fire pension, mm-hmm. and our fire pension is very solid. It's very healthy. It's something that you know because of the pension issues with pub, uh, with both police and fire in Dallas and Houston, um, and we've been watching it even closer. But it's uh, it's it's uh, what I would consider to be on on solid footing. Okay, and also uh, the, right now in the state, we've got uh, a lot of. I guess news about Sanctuary City, yeah. the new Sanctuary yeah. City bill, yeah. is that going to have any effect at all on on Lubbock? I don't believe so. I mean, I I'm, I came out early on on this saying that that I supported the uh, we, we were not a Sanctuary City. I support the I supported uh, Senator Perry's effort. Um, I, I the uh, you know I think the law of the land. This is to me. This is all about federal law, and let's follow the federal law. I. We real, I'm trying real hard to make sure that we stay in our lanes at City Hall, do, you know, follow the charter and do what the city government's supposed to do. And would hope the state government and the and the federal government would do the same. I do know that the the wrinkle that was added in the uh, um, in the House, um, I, I know that's caused quite a bit of concern. I, in, in, my only hope is that that doesn't tie this thing up in the courts. I, I think the bill, I think Senator Perry's bill uh, prior to that uh, amendment was one that would have passed muster and I think it would have probably been good for us but we're not a sanctuary city our, our police I, th- I think the chief's quoted in the paper today I hadn't had a chance to read it I saw it this morning but um, I, I believe it's business as usual for mm-hmm. us yeah, yeah seems like it yeah uh, we had the uh, sheriff on and he said uh, wasn't well in fact the sheriff is sending what do you say eight of his deputies to training at that at, at uh, the whip uh, to get federally licensed if that's the proper term to handle and to work with the feds right so right. And, uh, that's, and that frankly is a lot more of you know their that's even more of their function if, if we were to detain someone it, they would end up in the county jail we don't right. run our own right. jail and so right. at that point his his folks would have that that responsibility and he needs his, he needs his folks up to speed on how to handle that yeah, he does. and how to yeah. relate yeah. with the feds and so that's forth right. and so on right. but anyway the story this morning says the texas attorney general announced monday yeah. that the state had filed a lawsuit against local officials yeah. he said were hostile toward a ban on sanctuary cities i saw that Jeez. yeah, yeah i think it's um I, you know this is unfortunately i think the only winners in this deal for the for the foreseeable future are going to be the attorneys because i think they'll be on, on both sides yeah. i mean <laughs> the, the 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 sanctuary city bill that, that we that was passed that, that governor abbott signed on sunday night um is similar to the arizona bill which is um still very much being litigated to my understanding so it's it is what it is. that's you know I'm yeah, not, I, go I, on. I, I need to worry about what i can control here locally yeah. and, and we'll, we'll we're gonna follow the law that's, so it's that's not our, a it's not an issue for lubbock yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of what i suspected yeah. anyway uh 716 uh, mayor you know the couple of things that uh, i particularly wanted to ask you about um and one one is the um is the Villa Inn. This has been a topic of interest for me since this story first broke about the seven people getting shot. And I kind of started a little campaign of why is that place still open? And lo and behold, a a state judge, which is kind of what I I don't understand exactly how the state got in that. It's a city property or on city property. um, Closed it down. And so the question, the question being, I can certainly understand that and uh, glad to see him do it. But ultimately, uh, it seems to me like that thing is headed for the bulldozer. And I'm wondering if the city of Lubbock, uh, we we guess that the owner of this property might very well walk away from it and uh, leave it for this. I guess the city, would it become the property of the city? If we condemned it, it would be. Well, you'd have to do something with it. If we condemned it, condemned it and condemned it and seized it you know right now the bank is the lender is, is um, taking control of the property and has a local attorney serving as the uh, their, their trustee on the, on the on the property i i uh, we we don't know what will happen the, the the you know the reason that the judge hatch that the district judge got involved was that we had worked with the da's office with uh, on this and so we we had instigated this effort and it does require a uh, uh, to do what we did, did requires a, a state judge to to take that action. But we'll follow the we'll follow the process. It's a we tried to get it. Frankly, it should have been done earlier. It was something we've been working on, and and uh, you just can't have. It, it was a um, with all due respect to the people that live there on a long term basis. It was a it was a public nuisance. It wasn't it wasn't safe. 
and uh, the people that own it were not taking care of it. They had a hard time paying their taxes. Um, it was, well, I'm, I'm glad we took the action we did. Yeah. And if we end up having to tear it down, you know, we 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 have money in our budget for for those kind of things. Yeah. This would be a big one, but you know, we tore our house down oh, just in the middle part of Lubbock the week before last. That situation where there's one that was condemned and not taken care of, and we've so got to do something some, with it. Something we'd have to do. We back this one we started to tear down and. There were a bunch of uh, bees. There was a beehive in the in the in the storage room. We had to took had to call the beekeeper in to get the bees out. I mean, it, it, you know, you don't have bees in something where you're living in it. And no, you know, and not so, usually, um, you know, unless you're trying to raise them. Well, so. of course, the story goes on. Now they're looking at the uh, cocoa in, and th- that was an interesting story. And I don't know if you saw it on Everything Lubbock about the number of police calls. It was on KCBD, by the way. What did I say? Everything level I'm is sorry. on KCBD. Uh, we got to give credit where credit's due. That's right. Yeah, KCBD did an investigative story on that and the number of police calls. I was shocked at the number of police calls at uh, the Coco. And the other one was Red, Red Roof, Roof. Red yeah. Roof Inn. Uh, like one a day. It's uh, craziness. I had no idea that. Uh, one a day's compared to the uh, villa. One a day would be just uh, make us yawn. I, I, mean, I, I you understand that, those, but you saw those. We had, we, we, we had more than two a day of, da- of serious crime, dangerous crimes, not yeah. just the not just somebody's car being broken into or somebody locking themselves, you know, a cat on the roof or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but, but I mean, it was uh, it was just amazing to me that uh, that we would be getting that many calls uh, for uh, hotels here in Lubbock. So anyway, and another one, um, in, in all of my years in Lubbock, which is a number of years, uh, I have never seen the growth uh, exploding like it is now. Um, hotels, it's, <laughs> you can't count the hotels that we're building in this city. You can't count the apartment complexes that are being built and the, uh, the shopping centers and even uh, houses. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, I haven't. Not in Lubbock. I've seen it. I saw. Uh, I happened to live in both Austin and Nashville, and the one in the late, well, Nashville in the early '90s was growing about like this, but bigger city already at that point. It's a, it's a great, it's a good problem to have. It's a high class problem. Yeah. Um, you know, our apartment occupancy still remains at ninety two percent. The last, the last look at that. Um, well, hot- who, who's going to stay in all these hotels well, that we're building? You know. Uh, this weekend they're pretty much all full. The next two weekends you got graduations. Yeah. And we had, you know, we filled them up. Uh, three weekends in April they were completely full. Um, we had you know UIL activities, Garth Brooks. Um, he had a big destination imagination event here. The de- the demand for hotel rooms is not going down. It's growing a little bit. It's not. It's frankly not quite growing as fast as supply is. But the thing I look at on the on these hotels being bought or being built. Is it all but one of the ones that have been built that are under development and being built are being built by local people, local investors. And they're the ones that should understand the market. Now, right. some would suggest that they're they're building a little bit ahead of themselves to keep maybe some of the big guys out of town, the national folks out of town. But we're willing to take that risk to allow us to grow into it a bit. Yep. I, I don't know. But uh, this isn't folks coming in from and speculating from outside of our community. These are folks that understand our marketplace. Yep. Well, and, you know, we were talking this morning about the number of, uh, well, for example, the number of houses that have, uh, it's, it, it seems to be a story every day where a house burns down in Lubbock. And, of course, we don't know. It's purely anecdotal. I don't know if it's always been that situation or whether it is just that way now. But we have to stop and think. Lubbock is getting a lot bigger. And I, are we, are our services, are our fire and police services keeping up, do you think? I believe they are. Um, I, we could talk about that after the break if you'd like. But, yeah, it's, it's top of mind for us, certainly. So I, I did get a, a text um, about the state legislators yeah. going with, uh, what is it, local control. Yeah. And yeah. How, do you think the state legislators going overboard and trying to regulate that, or are they just uh, trying – I mean, I, it seems like to me they're trying to put out fires, and they're trying to preempt that by putting a little more stringent uh, rules in that. And is that going to affect Lubbock at all? I, I think it'll have a very small impact on Lubbock. I, I, I give you there, there. There are some things that cause me concern, uh, but but probably not the ones that everybody else is concerned about. I mean the 
the tax the tax uh, you know implications of tax increases and all. We're, that's not going to impact us. We're not going to raise our taxes that much. That's um, um, they've carved out growth on that, which protects you know. In, in other words, if you as long as you're grow your taxes are growing because you're growing um you know you're you're safe there i i um i i think some of the efforts are um to try to um fix problems that the legislature perceives i mean i think you know you see the austin the the decision that voters in austin made last year about uber and lyft i mean to me that seems crazy however you know i i i um uh, I think the Oster, the voters of Austin should be able to decide that. You know, I guess I'm a, more of a libertarian every day that goes by. I feel the same way about the plastic bags. I don't think that's something that we want to vote on. But Fort Stockton has a plastic bag ordinance. Mm-hmm. He, they've got a Tea Party go- a mayor. They're about as conservative as they come. But those plastic bags get in the cow feed, and it causes a problem. So the voters decided not to – the citizens decided to, to outlaw them. You know, I think if they want to do that, they should be able to do it. And that's um, – but that, those things don't impact us. There, there's a there's one piece of legislation down there right now that um, the the next generation of cell towers is uh, the small cell technology. It'll support the 5G. Um, so you're not going to see these big towers. You're going to see much smaller, um, say, suitcase sized or smaller, small suitcase sized um, and or transmitters that'll be on uh, often on existing. Um, electric poles, uh, light poles, th- those kind of things. And uh, we, we, we're we working right now um, with the telecommunications companies on that one. And, uh, you know, I, I'm afraid that, that that bill may be one of those situations where, uh, where I wish they'd you know, basically give us the parameters and let the local, um, the local cities handle it. I'm afraid that's not going to happen, and and I think some of our big city brethren often um, um, drag us down. They're more liberal than we are. They, when you look at Dallas and and Houston and Austin and San Antonio, in particular, they uh, they don't look like the legislature from the standpoint of the representation and the leadership, and so they find themselves at at, at odds often, and we find ourselves sometimes. Uh, um, being, you know, b- getting the the uh, consequences of some of the, some of those kind of decisions, but mm. you know, we're supportive of. We got we got our delegation's done a great job. Senator Perry and uh, Chairman, you know, Chairman Frulo, Chairman Perry, Chairman Frulo, and Representative Burroughs have done continue to do great work for us. And nineteen days left, I think, or twenty days left, and we're sort of counting it down. We're we all I think breathe a little uh, a little better when they're when they're not in session. Mm. So. Uh, oh, I was a question. We, I know we had a, a, a text message of, asking about downtown Lubbock. And yeah. Of course, that's that's again that's one of my things. Uh, <clears throat> what what do you see as the grand plan for downtown Lubbock, and and how is it going now? We're making big progress downtown, but progress downtown is not like uh, developing a cotton field. You know, it's it, right. it, it's redevelopment takes a long time, uh, but there's a. Uh, you know, and and what from what I've heard, most of the property downtown belongs to churches or government, so there's not that much property that can be destructed or rebuilt. Well, there's a lot of it that belongs to to um, uh, to government. Although you know we're, uh, I think you'll see us. Uh, um, the Citizens Tower is one of them. Yeah, we, I think you'll see us as we like. Give me a good example. We'll, we'll when we when Citizens Tower is finished the. The Lubbock Business Center, where LPNL is today, we'll we'll move out of that, and and you know it's it's my thought that go we'll put we'll sell that. That needs to go back on the tax rolls. We don't need to continue to take things off the tax rolls. That that certainly helps the development effort down there. But you know you've got uh, the Buddy Holly Hall groundbreaking is a big deal for downtown. There's a hotel project just west of Wells Fargo. Um, I happen to be a property owner on Broadway. I've been for 20 years, and I got a notification from. Uh, from planning, uh, uh, city planning over the over the weekend uh, about a variance that the folks that are developing that hotel are asking for. Uh, there's quite a bit of speculation in land downtown. So even though it may, there may not be a lot going on, the, the land so prices you, you are— So you feel like it's coming? I do feel like it's coming. I see the investment. And when you start to see that you see the investment, you know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be there. Um, and don't you think that uh, investment breeds investment? It sure does. 
And all you've got to do is go to the uh, to the arts district and spend time down there. Mm-hmm. Most any weekend, certainly first Friday, but uh, see the, see the the vibe that, that's going on there, what's happening there, and the success of both uh, West Table and Italian Garden, the two you know two restaurants yeah. that they're doing very well. Um, so we've got and Rager, Boy, uh, you know, those guys, you. those guys. I mean, you you think of about folks like Rager Dykes, and you think about people like Alderson and the folks that continue to invest downtown. That's that's a uh, uh, that's good for us. Okay, seven forty-two here on KFY Mo- oh, mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin and Mayor. We appreciate you coming on this morning and uh, imparting some words of uh, wisdom and information about what's going on in the city. Yeah, thanks for having me. I look Thank forward you. to coming back, guys. Thanks. You got it. We'll be back.